Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's episode has to do with antennas. It seems to be a very favorite topic among those who ask questions. You know, a lot of hams, um, they buy their, their radios. It used to be that most hams built their radios, but that's long gone. Um, and we buy our radios and we connect them up with the coax and SWR meters and amplifiers and things like that. But from that point, it gets a little sketchy as to what you can do because now you're in the mode of building. Uh, you're going to put in a ground rod next to your station. You're going to run a ground into your station. You're going to connect everything to it. There's going to be lightning rasters, da 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 da. You're going to put an antenna someplace, and that antenna may very well be homemade. So there are lots of things that you can do. Now, this problem, which comes from Tom Lish, uh, N6AJR, he is retired uh, into the high desert in Southern California, which covers a very broad span. When I was a high schooler, I used to spend a lot of time in Lucerne Valley, which is to the east of Victorville. And Victorville was a pretty little town back then. It is not little today. Um, and I can remember many Friday afternoons after school, my friend and I would um, go along uh, 130, no, it's 118, is it? Um, out to uh, get into Lucerne Valley and then um, go up to the cabin up there. We had a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't a ham then, but we still put up antennas and listened on the shortwave and so on. Okay, so he is um, a disabled Vietnam vet having trouble getting around wants to use either his 8 TAS 100, which I think is the Yesu, or my original Don Johnson DK3, which is a full-size screwdriver antenna, uh, mounted to either a metal picnic table or a tripod with several radials. Uh, it depends on the picnic table. There's, there's multiple kinds of aluminum picnic tables. There's the cheap kind you get at Walmart which you set up, have a little event, and, and fold it back up and put it away for the next event. Or you've got the uh, kind from a nursery or something that's just a, like the city uses, a big heavy aluminum table. Off time, the uh, stuff on top of it is uh, not conductive. You've just got the aluminum uh, poles in there. Um, and then he, so, so to talk about what he's trying to do, he's trying to connect um, a mobile antenna, an HF mobile antenna, to some surface or something. And then uh, the mobile antennas are designed to use the car as their ground, counterpoise really. Um, and he's wondering if he could do that here? The answer is yes, absolutely you can. Um, there's a couple things you can do. One is to uh, drive a ground rod into the earth um, and put some sort of a pole with it on which you can mount that mobile antenna and have it down at ground level and then use the ground as ground or put out some radials that you know, um, the optimum number of radials varies from installation to installation, about 25. Um, and put them out there and then you can run that mobile antenna all you want. You don't have to put any stuff in there. You could, I mean, if it really is a big metal table and it's all um, welded together, then yeah, you can use that as a, a mounting device for your antenna. It would probably work pretty good. Now, um, let's look down here at the whiteboard. Um, if you've got a metal table and it's got however its legs are underneath it, okay, 
you want to mount in the middle for the best signal distribution. The signal will tend to favor where there's metal, not as much that way, and not as much that way. Okay. Um, it's not going to be pronounced, but it will happen that way. Um, if you put it down directly on the ground, you want your radials to come away from the thing right at the bottom of this. So you don't want to put a mount here, uh, then put the antenna on it, bring a wire down here, and then have a radial field. This now becomes part of the antenna, and you don't want that. You want them to come up and attach right under where the uh, antenna is. Okay, and out in the desert, um, I don't think that should be too hard. You won't have any, you don't have to worry about things in the way like trees. So anyway, either way would work and you'd operate it just as you would in your car. Now, the settings obviously will be different because you have a different ground. So if you remember at 67 turns at 40 meters, it'll not be 67 turns. At 67 turns will be something else. So uh, you can... Uh, put it up that way. I think that will work just fine for you. Um, I think you've got a good area to live out there. You probably have less local noise uh, than you would. And uh, you say you've got a couple, uh, you've got 50 feet of Rome 25, which is tower, and rotors and such, which we'll have to wait for later. I would warn you about ground in uh, the desert. That desert, as I remember it, has a very rocky soil. Uh, you may have hard time putting in um, ground rods. Uh, one thing that you can do, and this is a whole different picture here, is uh, first of all your structure that you live in may have an oofer ground. An oofer ground, which will probably come up in the basement or in the garage, probably down there people tend to build on pads. So this will come up in the garage. It'll be a piece of rebar. And that rebar extends all the way under here and makes for an outstanding ground. And you can use that as your main house ground. Your utility probably already connects to it. Um, another option to try and drill a ground rod down there because rocky out there um, in some places. Other places are silt. Um, you could dig a trench about a foot deep by 16 feet and then lay two ground rods end to end. Connect them together, bond them together, and this is your ground. Okay, because why the reason for two is you're only a foot under the ground. This one will give you sort of a cylinder of coverage uh, about six feet deep and so will this one and the two together will give you a nice ground. And then that needs to be bonded. Uh, of course that'll go into your station and this is where your lightning arresters are and then you will bond that to the oofer ground. Um, I think it's very likely that your house will have the oofer ground and it will just look like a piece of rebar sticking up in the garage along one of the walls. Um, and that will do fine. My aircraft hangar actually has one just like that, the new for ground. I should take a picture of it so I can use it for these, these things right here. Okay, so um, Tom, I think I've uh, answered your question there of uh, what you can do. And uh, you can just operate it like you're in the car. Um, the uh, screwdriver antennas are highly loaded. So they will have very narrow bandwidth. So you'll have to retune them anytime you change frequency significantly on the band. Uh, that just comes with being a high Q antenna because it's so heavily loaded. Now, if the stinger on that thing is six feet or something like that, you're going to find that that thing will radiate nearly as well as a dipole. Okay, 
kind of an expensive way to put a dipole up, but uh, it will work on all the bands, just like it did in your truck or whatever uh, you used the thing before. Someday you'll be able to put that uh, uh, hex beam or whatever back up on that uh, 50 foot towers, but I think you are wise in waiting until you make more ham friends in your local club and they're, they're out there. The, the uh, whole Antelope Valley has uh, become pretty populated now. So there should be lots of people, lots of hams. And you go on up toward China Lake and you'll find a lot of uh, engineers and stuff up there working at the Naval Research Lab. So you'll find hams up there too. So I hope that helps. Um, if you would like to support this channel, help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. And don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73 and enjoy that high desert. I spent many wonderful years as a youth out in the high desert. We had a Jeep. We had a blast. All right, 73.